Getting your first cybersecurity job will undoubtedly be the hardest out of all the cybersecurity jobs you will get throughout your career. As a matter of fact, I've applied to hundreds or even thousands of jobs so far, and I certainly didn't get most of them. In fact, I got rejected by most jobs, which at this point is completely normal. As a matter of fact, most of the jobs I've had have been through referrals at my network rather than applications, but that's a video for another day. The thing is this, with each rejection, I learned something new, like an area of interviewing that I could improve upon or a skill set that I was missing, and with each application, I became a better and better candidate, going on to land in various jobs, including my current one as a security engineer at Amazon. Now, I'd like to start by sharing with you my experience of applying to a bunch of jobs, combined with my years of experience working in the cybersecurity industry and exposure to a lot of colleagues, recruiters, and hiring managers who've gone through this process. All of this is so that I can give you my take on how you should apply for cybersecurity jobs, depending on how much relevant experience you have. So for each of the stages, I'll focus solely on the most important aspects like having a strong resume, an irresistible portfolio, the right technical and problem solving skills, and an optimized LinkedIn profile as those will be a good baseline to start from. Now, let's start with stage one, where you have no relevant experience and no university or college degree, or even a cybersecurity certification, nothing at all. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is a very tough starting position, but if you're truly determined to become a cybersecurity professional, there are many things you could do to achieve your goal. Your number one priority here must be to get hands-on relevant experience. And here, depending on how old you are, I would actually recommend doing different things. So let's say you're in high school and you don't want to go to college or you can't go to college for whatever reason. I would recommend that you apply for apprenticeship or training programs available at your school. These are typically tailored for students who are just about to finish high school, like in the 11th or 12th grade, or have just finished high school and most large corporations actually have programs like this. The names the programs might take or look like might differ by country, state, county, or school district, or even the program itself. It might be called apprenticeships or training programs, but the idea is generally the same, to give you an opportunity to develop your skills, get real life experience, and also get paid enough at the same time. Even if you don't go for a specific cybersecurity apprenticeship program, as long as you will work with technology or systems or networks as part of the role, you should be fine. You could use these programs as a stepping stone to accelerate your journey to becoming a full-time cybersecurity professional at a very young age. I was able to get to cybersecurity at 18 and it's not impossible if you have the right strategy. Now, if you're not in high school and you've been stuck in another job that you don't like and you're interested in cybersecurity, I'd recommend focusing on learning the technical skills required. You can do this by getting well-known and knowledge-dense practical certifications, building a strong portfolio to showcase your skills, writing a great resume, and optimizing your LinkedIn profile. More on this towards the end of the video. Now, I've actually made separate videos already on how to optimize your LinkedIn profile and also how to write a resume, along with various cybersecurity portfolio projects where I go through everything in detail, and I'll go ahead and link them in the description below. Feel free to check them out. I've also put together a sample resume template that you can check out. I'll also link in the description. This basically has every Everything you need to get started in cybersecurity with projects and everything. But just as a quick summary, I'll start with learning the basics through your CompTIA Trifecta curriculum and then doing something like the Google Cybersecurity Certificate or the Microsoft Cybersecurity Certificate. And then after that, deciding on what path you want to go on. At this stage, you can either go on the offensive or defensive side of cybersecurity. Once you've decided that, I recommend doing labs projects, and certifications to reinforce that. You can also choose to learn a programming language of your choice, and I personally recommend Python. In terms of certifications, I can speak mainly to defensive ones because I work in the defensive side of cybersecurity, so you can go with the well-known ones like the BTL1 from Security Blue Team, the CCD from Cyber Defenders, or the CDSA from Hack the Box. I've made several videos about these certifications on my channel, so you can search them up on YouTube by searching Day Cyberwalks and the name of the certification. You'll definitely find those videos out there. Now, if you decide to go on on the offensive security side, based on my conversation with my friend Taddy, who is an offensive security engineer and has been in the industry for a couple of years, you can go for certifications like the EJPT from eLearn Security, the PMPT from TCM Security, or the OSCP from Offensive Security. You can watch more about how he got into offensive security just like myself without a college degree, and I'll link that video in the description below. In addition to this, I've also put together a cybersecurity learning framework that you can check out, linked in the description below. It's a six-month plan for those who are very new with everything they need step-by-step, -step, month by month in studying and getting into cybersecurity. Now, moving on, I've personally experienced everything at this stage as I got into cybersecurity as a college freshman at 18 without a degree. So I can relate to this and I'm sure others can too. So 
If you're currently teaching yourself cybersecurity while in college or in any other situation really, please feel free to share your feedback in the comments below. I'm sure we would all appreciate to hear your thoughts and your insights. Also, if you're interested in continuing the conversation, I also recommend joining our Cyberworks Academy Discord community of almost 4,000 members now, where we discuss various cybersecurity topics ranging from certifications to college, getting internships, and also non-cybersecurity things like anime, fitness, finance, cars, and a lot more. It'll be linked in the description below. Moving on. Now, stage two is where you still have no relevant experience, but you have a college degree. Here, depending on whether you just graduated or are about to graduate from college, or if you had already graduated a while ago, say anything over two to three years, I would actually approach applying to jobs in a different way from stage one. If you're about to graduate or are a fresh graduate, I'd focus on applying to graduate job programs. The reason why is because these programs are tailored specifically for people in their final year of higher education or people who have just gotten their degrees. Now, to be honest, you probably wouldn't find a cybersecurity graduate job program per se, but if you can at least get onto a job program that allows you to develop some technical skills, that would be more than ideal. I know several folks who were able to transition to cybersecurity this way and it makes it easier sometimes. The reason why graduate job programs are great is because they usually involve various placements ranging anywhere from 6 to 12 months and also allow for rotations, so it's a great place to start working and also get experience in different teams and departments and ultimately figure out what you actually want to do, which tends to happen basically by figuring out what you don't want to do. Now, if you graduated a while back and you went up to do something else like traveling or taking a gap year or life just moved you in a different direction and now you've decided that you want to work in cybersecurity, I'll focus on the cybersecurity roadmap, the resume, the portfolio and the certifications I outlined in stage one. Because to be honest, you're technically starting afresh. I'd also highlight that you have your degree Degree, if you study something relevant like computer science, cybersecurity, or something that involves IT or information systems or any course or modules that are relevant to cybersecurity that you might have done during your college experience. Now, let's move on to stage three where you might have some relevant job experience. So for example, let's say you're in your current job and you do some identity and access management and work with endpoints or vulnerability scanners on a day-to-day, -day, or you might even work in governance or compliance or whatever the case may be. Your role may not be doing advanced cybersecurity, but you you're actively working in the realm of security or supporting security use cases. So for example, say you're a system administrator and you manage user access controls. Your current tasks and responsibilities are very different from what a cybersecurity analyst or a cybersecurity engineer might be doing, but you're using tools to manage user privileges. You're also creating reports, which you use in various IT or security meetings and presentations. This would actually be good, relevant experience that you should highlight at the very top of your resume. However, bear in mind that you're applying for a cybersecurity job. So in emphasize the security aspect of your work rather than the general IT skills. Of course, network admin skills or sys admin skills are really important and you actually do need them in cybersecurity, but given that it wouldn't be the primary skill set recruiters and hiring managers will be looking for, you don't necessarily have to put them at the top of your resume. Instead, highlight how good you are at understanding security implications of user permissions or user access, or how good you are at communicating security threats using the data you have to a non-technical audience rather than how good you are at communicating in general or at creating IT reports that you might be using on your day to day. Finally, level four, where you have substantial relevant experience and you're looking to transition into cybersecurity or between cybersecurity roles by applying the skills you've acquired throughout your career. Let's use a specific scenario actually based on personal experience to demonstrate how you could apply the skills you already have to cybersecurity. I have someone I actually coached who was working as a network administrator. They're working with various systems, networks, and security protocols on a daily basis. Their focus was around identifying potential vulnerabilities or intrusions within the network, managing access controls, and ensuring that security protocols were in place. And also sometimes they were reviewing network packet captures by using Wireshark. Now, even though the role was not a cybersecurity role, the skills they needed and acquired throughout the years were totally applicable to cybersecurity tasks, such as reviewing system logs for potential anomalies or intrusions, implementing security measures, and also developing strategies to mitigate potential threats. So if you're currently in a job like this, where your skills are easily transferable to cybersecurity, I would certainly emphasize this relevant experience at the top of your resume. Reason is because it actually applies to cybersecurity. Now, this is probably the most important advice whether you have zero experience or you already have plenty. Never give up. I know it sounds cliche, but the difference between successful and less successful people is not actually their ability to succeed. It's their ability to come back from defeat, from failures, from rejections, and then work hard and improve and better themselves. Now, like I said earlier in the video, I've been rejected several times, hundreds of times 
one, maybe even thousands of times, and the first one really hurt. The second one hurt. The tenth one hurt. The hundredth one hurt. And probably the thousandth one hurt. And it will always keep hurting. Of course, these rejections and all of it gets to me. It's sad, frustrating, and discouraging. And back then, I was thinking, this is not fair. Clearly, I'm doing the best I can as an entry-level candidate. At the certs, at the products, at everything. But this was definitely the wrong approach. The moment I stopped thinking about the rejections and started thinking about why they rejected me and how I could improve so it doesn't happen again, everything changed. I put my head down, sucked it up, and worked relentlessly. And it's this work ethic, the countless hours of learning, the numerous days spent in my room all alone for going pleasures, building and enhancing my skills. This is exactly what landed me my job and has helped me progress fast in the industry. Learn to not live in the past, live in the moment and think about the future. Secondly, Second thing I've learned and I want you to learn is to stop comparing yourself to others. Everyone's journey is completely different. Everything I've achieved since I left Nigeria when I was 14, I've achieved through my own hard work, the help of my family, and the grace of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, all of which I'm really proud of. So I hope that you can take some inspiration from my experience and keep on going. Remember, it's not the success that defines you, it's actually your ability to come back from every failure that defines who you are. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Now check out this video that goes over how to optimize your LinkedIn profile or this video that goes over how to create a starter cybersecurity resume for jobs if you have zero experience. I'll see you over there. Bye-bye.